Think you can't have proper application lifecycle management in your Power Platform solutions? Well, think again. Iona Varga joins us today on the Low Code Revolution to show us how we can do automated deployments with Azure DevOps pipelines on the Low Code Revolution. Hey everyone, welcome to the Low Code Revolution. I'm April Dunham, and today we're joined by Power Platform consultant Iona Varga. Welcome to the show, Iona. Thank you very much for having me, April. Well, thank you for being here. So for everyone watching, would you mind giving a quick intro about who you are and specifically how you got started in the Power Platform? Because I think you have a pretty interesting story there. Um, interesting. That depends on who you ask, but no problem. Uh, sure. Um, well, uh, originally, I uh, actually uh, was educated as a physics engineer, spe uh, specifically on the uh, part of uh, medical physics and imaging. So I really did a lot on hardware and software development, on MRI scanners, ultrasound, you name it. I uh, did a lot with that. Um, and eventually got into data science. Um, so making models uh, from scratch. Um, and then you have this problem like, how do you let users um, interact with your data model because a model itself is not really useful for your organization. And that was when I actually got into Power Apps. So just create a Power Apps that runs on uh, Azure um, and you can interact with your uh, machine learning models. So that was really an easy way to have users interact with your models and also let them build their own applications around your model. So that was one of the first key moments for me, like, hey, you can do so much with the Power Platform. And that eventually got things rolling. And that is how I at the moment ended up as a Power Platform consultant. Well, so easy. That's a really super interesting story for me. I love those stories where you kind of come into the Power Platform from different areas. Um, so, you know, a lot that what you I understand that you do with the Power Platform is kind of what I would frame as in the fusion development space. So you do a lot with um, ALM and, and deployment and all of that. Um, so for people that come from a code first background, automated deployments and application lifecycle management is a really big topic area. So would you mind walking us through how the Power Platform can handle ALM and automated deployments? No problem. I've prepared a slide for you, which I'm going to show you. Um, so yeah, normally when you have like this uh, uh, regular traditional development, you have like repositories which you work in, etc. And for low code developers, it can be quite complex. So is it impossible? No, it's quite manageable and quite easy to achieve. Um, so how does that work in a bit of an overview? Um, you have your Power Apps, which is talking to your Power Platform, and inside there's an application user. And the use of the application user is basically to enable your API. And that API that can be requested by Azure DevOps can be any source basically, but the application user is what you need in your environment to get that ALM actually working. And that ALM that allows you to extract your solutions and basically see what's inside and also make it easy to collaborate on that as well. So there are only a few simple steps that you actually need to enable this ALM. So it's an Azure AD application registration that will become the application user, a commit pipeline, a build pipeline, and a deploy pipeline. And those four steps are basically it. And I can show you those as well inside of my Edge. So I'll go to my browser right now. Um, if you go to dev.azure.com, it's a great product. Um, it's used for automatic deployment, testing, um, creating code, etc. It's also by Microsoft and free to use. So especially for everyone at home trying to do the things that I'm going to show, it's a great way to start out as well. Um, one of the first steps to actually start before you go to Azure is go to your environment. And I created a demo solution in here. And the demo solution contains um, an application, and a security role. So nothing fancy, just to show you a typical um, solution that you could create yourself once it's loaded. So here you see, um, I have an unmanaged solution, I have an application, I have a role, but now I want to have that um, to a central repository where everyone can work on it, um, deploy it, maintain it, etc. So how can we do that? Well, with the, no the new environment, basically, um, you can go to the admin center, uh, it's pretty easy and self-explanatory. And from your environment, you can go to the user section. Takes a moment to load. Yeah, and these are environments for, for everyone watching too that uh, might not have delved into the Power Platform too much are kind of logical security and data boundaries that we can set up and we can use these for deployment scenarios, like say having a dev, a test in a production environment. Exactly. So. Um, 
you can either do it manual or you can do it automated. And in this way, I'm going to show it uh, automated. So once this is loading, I will um, switch in between to my Azure already to get things started. So in Azure, you have Azure Active Directory, which is a great tool for security and management. And in here, you see something called app registrations. And an app registration is basically just like a, a small piece of security, which tells Azure that, okay, the application that is trying to reach this is actually valid. Um, so to create one, you can simply name something. So I'm going to call this demo and then register it. And then basically that is already our application user, uh, despite the fact that Power Apps doesn't know that this one exists yet in the environment. So I can see if that one's loading already. This one is also loading right now. I'm so glad you're showing this, Iona, because this is a common misconception that I notice out there with, see, the code first developer audience is that low code platforms can't really handle these application and lifecycle management scenarios. So really glad that you're demoing this today. No problem. Um, so as I already mentioned, the application user is basically what is going to create our APIs. And right here you can see I created my uh, application registration in Azure. And under API permissions, I can basically tell this application that it should talk um, with Power Apps. So in here you see all these API permissions and it says Power Apps Runtime Service. And then it's one simple uh, check mark, add permission. And that is all there is to giving this application the right permissions. Um, so in here, I can go to my environments and from the environments view, I can simply select the environment that I want it for. So I, in this case, I have a development and a production environment. So if I just click uh, this development environment and I can go to my users, then very easily it already says looking for application users, click here to go. So it's really self-explanatory and it takes only two minutes, a bit faster if your internet helps, but so it's really that easy. And in here you can say new app user and I can say add an app and search by the name that I just created. So in this case, the demo app. And I can even specify to which unit it belongs. In this case, I'll just choose the entire organization and I can even edit a role. So for example, I wanted to do everything in my environment. I can give it system admin. And when I press on create, it takes a few seconds and it's completely in my environment and it's ready to use the API. Um, so I can do this as well for my production environment and then it's all good to go. But then I still need to find a way to make that work. And that is where Azure DevOps comes into play. So in this case, um, all you need is basically three pipelines. And these pipelines um, for not programmers um, can be quite hard to create. So I created some templates uh, based by the Microsoft documentation just to give you a feel of how that looks like. And if I go to edit, um, the one of the first three is the commit pipeline. And just to make it a bit more clear what commit means, um, normally if you go to your solution, you can click on expert solution and then you get a zip file. Basically this does that for you automatically. So first I create a step for the tool installer. I export my solution, I unpack it. So from my zip file, it will create a normal file. And this is the only code you actually need that is push to Git and Git is the repository inside of your Azure DevOps environment. And then I create an artifact which is ready to be deployed. So this is basically everything you need to export that uh, solution from your environment. It's pretty easy, pretty straightforward and everyone can do it. So next up is the build. And the build um, in here is very simple. And that is mainly just to show you the steps you need. So I have a tool installer again, just basically using the NuGet packages and then a pack uh, solution step. And um, it may seem redundant to first unpack it and then pack it, but basically before you pack the solution, you can do a lot more. So you could set, uh, for example, say set solution version. That's also a step in here. Um, I can show you that quickly. So it's a set set solution. I can drag and drop it here. You don't need to know anything about it. I can choose the service connection. And I'll show you that in a minute what that is as well. So that's pretty easy. And then what solution and what solution version number do I want? So everything that I want to do, I can do in here. I can even add PowerShell if I am more experienced. A lot of possibilities. Um, so as I mentioned for the um, service connection, those are also pretty easy. And that is where the application user comes into play with these kinds of things over here. Um, so it's very simple to create a service connection. 
I just type in Power Platform on here. I can click on Next. And these fields are all that are required. So the server URL, that is um, where you see the environment from the admin portal. There you can specify the server URL. The tenant ID, I can show that in Azure very quickly. That is in here. So if I go to Overview, and then right here, it says tenant ID, and you can just copy that from here and already place it in there. And then you have it up and running. So you fill in the application ID, the client secret, which you can generate, give it a name, and that's it. Then you can use your connections for everything. So those are the commit and the build. And what that basically does is, as I already said, um, it'll create a, a description of your uh, solution. So in here you see I have that Canvas app. I have a security role, which I, um, I constructed up front. And then you have some other stuff to build that solution. Um, so this is all in your repository. That's also coming for free. So that's pretty nice. And then there is one pipeline left. And that is what um, most people are interested in. That is the actual deploy. Um, so that's very easy as well. It's tool installer again, uh, a download, just to make sure that you have the zip file inside of your pipeline. And then you specify the import to which environment you want. And that can also be drag and drop. And that is the basic of having um, application lifecycle management working for you uh, as a developer. Um, and this is all really the basics that there are to. So it's create a commit, create a build, an import solution, and the application users. But you can expand that to uh, multiple levels. You can create YAML files out of this. Uh, for multiple environments, you can create variable stuff in that. So you can do a lot of cool stuff. And for example, if you're going to use more um, advanced custom connectors, there are also options for deployment setting files. And those may seem a bit trivial, but the deployment settings file makes sure that um, if you deploy and set an, a solution to a specific environment, you can always say like, hey, look, um, I have a custom connector. Um, I also have one in the new environment. Please use this one in my new environment. So you can create a lot of cool stuff with ALM these ways. Wow, that, that was a great overview. It did show how simple it is to set up these pipelines and everything. And I loved how it was integrated within Azure along the way. So we just popped in the Power Platform pieces there in the Azure portal and in DevOps there. And it was just pretty seamless to, to get started with that. So you can really tell the investment being made in the ALM story for the Power Platform there. Exactly. And as you see, it's only like what uh, it took us five minutes to, to create this. And it really helps you save time because you don't have to manually export, import, you name it. So it really saves up a lot of time and a lot of effort. And it really gets you back to actually developing your solutions and creating cool stuff. Yep, absolutely. That's where we want to spend our time. So this has been a, a super great overview. For those that want to learn a little bit more about application lifecycle management and all the possibilities beyond pipelines and everything that we showed today, are there any resources that we can point people to? I think there's some, maybe some Microsoft documentation out there. There is a lot of Microsoft documentation indeed. Um, so there's a lot that people can actually use. Um, lots of Azure DevOps uh, documentation about it. Uh, Power Platform itself has documentation about it. So it's very easy to find a lot of information. Yeah, and I believe if you go to aka.ms forward slash ALM Power Platform, that'll take you to a bunch of resources for ALM and governance and all of that with the Power Platform. So definitely something to check out. Thank you so much, Yona, for being on the show today and showing us some of the ALM capabilities with the Power Platform. No problem. Thank you as well. And I really hope that at least someone has some benefits from this and that'll make my day. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's all for today. We will see you in the next episode of The Low Code Revolution. Oh, 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 oh,